So a very good morning to everyone. I think we wait another one or two minutes until people log on so that everyone can join. So again, very good morning to everyone. Welcome to day two of this seminar on digital inclusive insurance solutions hosted by the TAG Microinsurance Technical Advisory Group in Zambia. I'm very pleased to be with you here. My name is Dirk Reinhardt. I'm the Vice Chairman of the Munich Re Foundation. And I was very happy to be involved in this uh, digital conference. I would like to welcome our three speakers today. So let's start with Elizabeth Mdogo from Digi Farm Kenya. Elizabeth has 17 years of work experience with focus in the telco industry. Um, since more than 12 years, she's working in different positions for Safaricom. Now she holds the position of a senior manager, digital solutions. I won't go into further details. You can find all her curriculum in the brochure of the conference. So very warm welcome to you, Elizabeth. And thank you so very much for taking the time to be with us and to share your experience. Now, very warm welcome to George Korea, Chief Executive Officer at Acre Africa. George has over 18 years of experience in different senior roles in the insurance industry. And today he works as CEO of Acre Africa, which specializes in agri-insurance products and risk management. At the same time, he is chairman of the board of the nonprofit organization Carolina for Kabira. They aim at reduce poverty in informal settlement in Kabira, Nairobi. So George, very warm welcome to you as well. Thank you so much for joining. And you brought one colleague with you. So thank you for joining with the whole team. So now, unfortunately, Elizabeth Dogo has fallen ill, so she would have spoken about, uh, sorry, um, Fatma Fernandez um, has fallen ill, founder and CEO of Kinswood. She is sick, unfortunately, and we wish her all the best that she recovers soon. But thank you very much, Agnes Chaconta, for stepping in. Agnes had some technical problems yesterday. Um, in one of the sessions. So we decided to ask her to speak here again so that her experience doesn't get lost. Agnes is the vice president of the TAC Microinsurance Association, and she's the managing director of Medicine Life Insurance Company, Zambia, a subsidiary of Medicine Financial Services. Agnes has certainly been a pioneer and driver of innovative microinsurance and inclusive insurance products in Zambia. And I remember meeting Agnes for the first time in 2005 at the first International Microinsurance Conference, which is today the International Conference on Inclusive Insurance in Munich. So Agnes certainly has um, been on board through this long journey of developing microinsurance. So thank you very much for being with us today as well. To not to lose too much of the time, uh, we will start immediately with a session so we have two presentations around agriculture, one around life, but basically what unites all the presentations is the question of what are some of the successes and challenges and lessons learned in applying digital inclusive insurance? Um, yeah, what are the solutions? How could they look like? And what are the enablers for digital insurance solutions and the barriers? And we'll talk about that through in the discussion. So the floor, we decided to start with George Korea from Acre Africa and his colleagues. So thank you. And the floor is yours.
George, we can't hear you and we can't see you. I'm just sharing my presentation. You may need to fold your screen maybe a little bit so that we can see you as well. You only see the slightly tip of your head. Hey, that is much better. Thank you very much and, 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 and thanks for having us. I'll just spend uh, two minutes talking about Take Africa and then my colleague Benson is going to take you through um, the digital questions that, that you're trying to, to answer. Um, and, and yeah, so Lake Africa is um, is an insure tech um, operating in sub-Saharan Africa. We are now 11 years old. Um, we target uh, smallholder farmers who are vulnerable to the emergent climate uh, change issues, uh, you know, relating to the volatility in the in climate, and putting these together with um, you know understanding of um, of, of of agriculture value chain, um, you know, different investments uh, within the, the insurance sector and technology to then be able to bring products that enable the farmers to be more resilient. And this is done uh, via partnerships. So we look at people who are working within the sector, different uh, points of the value chains, whether the insurers or insurers, as well as other partners who enable us to aggregate farmers. So we currently physically operate in Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda and activities in several other different countries. And we are in the process of completing an acquisition of AIC Africa by Zepri, a PTA reinsurance company, which then now increases our reach to the Comesa region. Um, so largely two buckets of services are the product side, there's, a, there's agriculture insurance products. So you've got the index based ones, so crop, livestock and, and hybrids and two new products under development, uh, soil moisture index and picture-based index, which try to deal with some of the challenges that exist on, on the existing product portfolio. And then we, the traditional indemnity products, uh, livestock mortality and multi period crop insurance, and then different services um, on the, you know, that enable um, farmers to understand risk better. So financial education, you know, um, well done digital solutions that offer different services, whether it's crop inspection, crop cuts, enabling insurers to administer insurance contracts, monitoring of seasons. And then we do different advisory work, um, things like risk profile assessment, risk management training, um, feasibility studies, product development for the different partners that we work with. Yeah, so that's that's ACA in a, in a nutshell. And, and then I'll let Ben and uh, run through the rest of the slides. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much, George. My, my name is Benson. I'm with Digital Inclusion in Africa. So some of the digital solutions being implemented in agriculture um, uh, run across the, the, the run across from product design to distribution payment, insurance, um, policy management, and training. So in terms of product design, we have many product solutions in, uh, uh, especially with the index where we are using satellite, satellite data to design different products. They could be weather index or they could be a yield. And recently, as we've seen, there we are coming up with also products that will be based on the soil moisture index. And uh, additionally, we have uh, solutions that uh, run uh, on ground activities where mobile applications can be handled by extension officers where they can take pictures. And once they take these pictures, they can be used to verify uh, uh, the indices done by the satellite. In terms of distribution, we, we can, we've seen mostly GSM based applications. These are SMS, USSD, uh, which are able to do geo triangulation and get locations of these farmers. We've also been able to see smartphone based applications uh, where they can connect using GPRS and the internet and other integrations with uh, stakeholders in the industry. For example, input suppliers systems integrated with credit financial systems 
uh, where insurance can be distributed through these channels. Then we've seen payment solutions. These include mobile money solutions where you're able to collect or disperse uh, payments. Then uh, insurance management solutions, uh, where this is where one system where several players sit, uh, insurance, insurers, and uh, they're able to communicate in real time and in uh, also contract review, we're able to see uh, the satellite is directly connected to a backend system that is visible to the insurer and reinsurer where all of the players are able to see what's going on and they're able to, to see whether claims is due to be paid or not. Then finally, we've been seeing uh, training solutions that run on voice, run on SMS, and also run on social media applications uh, like Telegram and WhatsApp. Next slide, please. So in terms of the successes that we've seen so far, um, innovative uh, insurance products have come on board quite strongly. So we're able to see more custom solutions. So when I mean custom, they, they meet the specific location, they meet the specific crop and uh, phenological uh, conditions in a certain area. Then we've also seen uh, this innovation has enabled uh, reduction in price. So we have very cost-effective uh, solutions. We see as little as zero point five dollars uh, in premium payments for the farmers. This has been attributed uh, to this uh, good design. Then we've also seen a wider market reach and increased adoption. The same thing: uh, the increase of mobile-based distribution using USSD, we've seen high penetration of mobile, then riding on that high penetration, then we're able to reach more farmers. Then ad additionally, we've been able to see uh, better payment collections, as I've stated earlier, the mobile money wallets that have come up uh, strongly also assist in the success. Then cost-effective monitoring. Um, you don't have to send a, an officer to the ground to assess and determine payouts uh, claims. So due to that, uh, where we have monitoring uh, through satellite, this has enabled cost-effective uh, products. Then uh, some of the challenges that we've been facing um, in this industry is basis risk. So satellite uh, would cover a certain area, but uh, in areas where we have mountainous or valleys, then the satellite may read differently. Uh, so these are some of the challenges, some of the challenges, pests and diseases, the satellite may not be able to see, then we've been able to see some of these challenges in product. Then they have limited reach in terms of infrastructure, some of the areas where farmers are located, you realize the network may not, that, may not be that good, then the ability to access uh, the, the product becomes a challenge either through a smartphone or either using the USSD or SMS. Then uh, additionally, the insurance policy administration, uh, for example, you see several players involved in administering a policy from an aggregator to an insurer and reinsurer. So that process of these parties communicating either through emails, waiting for communication may be a bit slow. Uh, and with that, it may lead to delayed uh, uh, and inefficiencies in that process. Then additionally, high cost of training uh, if you need to conduct training on the ground, then it means you have to send people uh, visit the different uh, uh, camps or villages, uh, conduct these trainings, which is high, uh, may lead to a bit of a high cost if it, unless, as opposed to if it was, it was a bit digital. Then some of the lessons learned. So like the satellite indices that we have been using for, for, for for innovative products in insurance would need a validation mechanism. So we're calling it a ground truthing mechanism where somebody on the ground can confirm that whatever the satellite is depicting is actual truth. And then it can support validation and recalibration. Then uh, other lessons learned include um, ability, uh, the insurance as we've seen over, the in, uh, over our experience is moves much better when bundled with other products that normally the farmers would buy like farm inputs or credit access. Then uh, finally, another lesson is that uh, 
key, the key contributor for adoption of insurance is information, uh, where if the farmers feel the information is clear and it's transparent, there is no underhand deals, then they usually get to trust the, the insurance product and it leads to mass adoption uh, 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 where because they, the word of mouth and the continuous sharing of, um, uh, of the, the benefit. So those are the key lessons that we have learned. So we can go on to describe some of the snapshot solutions. I'll, I'll go through quickly at the end of all these snapshots, a brief demo of, of some of the solutions where Eka Africa has been involved in. So in terms of product design, um, I won't go into detail, I'll just mention, uh, we have uh, product uh, examples of solutions which are satellite-based precipitation index. Uh, this we look at the precipitation index through, through satellite and it helps to overcome some of the challenges uh, as we've mentioned earlier, where we have more now more affordable premiums and cheaper cost of administration. Then we have weather station based precipitation index. This one has helps in solving some of the product problems that we see in basis risk. Um, they act as validators to the satellite. And uh, 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 yeah, so you're able to compare the data between satellite and the weather uh, stations. Then additionally, uh, where we are involved in, like Eka Africa, to solve some of the challenges we've seen, is satellite-based soil moisture indices. So with our research and pilot as Eka Africa, we, we would want to use this because uh, soil moisture index help reduce the basis risk problem because we're actually checking uh, the actual moisture in the soil as opposed to uh, looking at the satellite only. Then the satellite-based yield index as well, this we're also doing uh, to support our, our precipitation-based index. And uh, uh, to, it will cont continually to solve the same problem uh, where we, we have seen in product design. Then finally, the picture-based index. This one is still uh, uh, Acre Africa doing it in, in pilot and uh, to support uh, using gro on-ground imagery uh, where we, we, we validate and compare with the weather and precipitation-based index. So in terms of product design and monitoring solutions, those are the uh, five major ones that uh, ECA is involved in and uh, we've been trying, we are using in the industry. Uh, next. In terms of insurance distribution, what are the some of the solutions? So we've seen USSD-based activations. I believe uh, most of you would know the USSD, um, where, where, where the, the farmer may just use their normal GSM. If there is GSM, doesn't have to be a smartphone, then insurance can reach to them. They're able to get access to the different products and they're able to now connect it to payment. They're able to make payment. Then uh, additionally, so we have also mobile application-based sales where uh, it's a smartphone either the farmer is able to access or the we have uh, field agents where we call them in Eka africa village champions who would be able to sell the insurance uh, through the smartphones they, they they use the smartphones as a point of sale so it's more of assisted type of sales they walk around their villages selling the insurance then we have bundled sales solutions where we, you, you're interconnected to an input supplier or interconnected to a credit financier and you're able to distribute your insurance directly. And uh, finally, other solutions in distribution are pre-booking and pre-saving, where farmers may not have money now, but they can make an order, then continually save for the order uh, a, a, over a period of time and collect their inputs and the insurance at the end. Then payment solutions, we're able to see mobile money, ability to make payments and ability to collect payments. This one is straightforward. Uh, as you know, in Kenya, uh, we, uh, there's huge, uh, in Kenya, there is a huge adoption as well as in Zambia. Then uh, insurance administration. So the inefficiencies of the back office can really be solved with um, having automated approvals where instead of email communication, they could have a workflow communication between the different parties. Then automated contract monitoring, 
this especially can be done, uh, for example, what we are involved in as Eka Africa can be actually done on the blockchain, which connects directly to the satellite, therefore ensuring that there is transparency and ensuring trust and also automated claims payment still can be done uh, as we are doing it in Eka Africa in, in uh, using our our current developments on blockchain where it's a smart contract driven type of claims payment if um, certain conditions are met then the smart contract is triggered then this is the reduction of claims from weeks to one day to hours uh, depending on the authorization uh, workflow then finally uh, the next slide information sharing and training solutions. So most of the uh, solutions that can and are, are used are SMS and mobile application-based solutions, which offer uh, continuous information. For example, SMS-based solution would trigger communication uh, to these farmers. For example, if uh, a claim is due, then they're able to get that. If, uh, if, if the policy is activated, then they get such communication. Similarly to mobile app-based solutions, if farmers are able to have, the farmers that are tech savvy and have smartphones, which we've seen, they'll be able to do it on themselves. They're able to check the status of their policy and they're able to get more training information on risk and also on good practice in agriculture. Um, yeah, so with that, uh, I would want to show uh, briefly uh, uh, distribution, uh, a sample uh, USSD system where, where we, we have been using. We, and then uh, maybe finally, George will talk on the recommendations. So uh, let me share my screen. Uh, I'm sharing a mobile application. Okay, so this is a demonstration where a farmer is buying either insurance or is buying inputs. So you see we have buy insured farm inputs, buy Bima Pima insurance, they're able to see their account. In account, they're able to check balances, check statuses. Uh, farming advice is where they get uh, advised on different farming practices. Input financing is if they request for input financing. So I'll go to number one, in short farm inputs. This is the bundling option. So it's an interconnection between insurance and uh, input supplier. So they're able to buy a farm input. specify so here we can have several categories seeds fertilizer but for now we only have the seed so for the sake of this demo i'll choose onion how many packets would you want to buy say one when is your planting month so this is important for insurance design you need to know the date that the planting started. So we'd say the fourth week of that month. Now, what I said, they're able to pay now in full, pay in bits. So if they're paying in installments or pay later. So for now, let me just pay now. Uh, this will, will prompt an M-Pesa uh, uh, where they're able to pay directly sorry you'll see my spin i'll change it i know this is uh, it's private so that farmer has paid for that input 
and automatically they 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 get um, on full payment they get a voucher on their phone by SMS which they will use to redeem at different outlets where the input supplier who we have integrated with has the the offices. Then I'll go to number two. I'll demonstrate shortly, very fast. Uh, the Bima Pima insurance. Okay, let me reshare my screen. It seems to have disconnected. So a farmer can choose to buy directly insurance without buying the input. So that would be number two. This is some one of our product called Bima Pima Insurance. So they can buy the same concept. What what is your value chain? Is it maize, potatoes? They have to choose that. And they're able to pay, uh, for example, so this is premium for a maximum payout of 500, pay 100 for maximum payout of that. So it's dynamic. If I choose pay above 500, I could specify an amount, but for now, let me just say 50. So this is Kenya shilling 50, which means it's uh, around 0 0.5 um, uh, in terms of dollars. So I'll choose a month. the same thing so for now i'll not pay i'll just choose pay later thank you and uh, you're able to get that so return so quickly let me just show you something the farmer is able to check the status of these things that they have purchased so number three like they can go to their account they can check an order, check balance. Like the one I have just paid for, like the second one. Able to see the your current saved amount is three shillings, balance is zero, target amount is three, meaning they paid everything. If I go back to the insurance one, you'll see the 50 was not paid. Uh, but I think you get the point. So Basically, this is a USSD based um, distribution channel. Anybody with a smartphone or a feature phone is able to do it. The farmer is able to do it on their own or with the assistance of a village champion. So thank you. I'll go back to sharing. Thanks, Benson. Yes. OK, so I'll stop sharing and go back to the web, what we see at the back end. We have time. So at the back end, you're able to see the total orders made by the different farmers, how uh, the cost and the turnover and the payment, for example, this, uh the the one i was using is called alex kid the one i was just demonstrating he bought this quantity and they the uh the date they did it you're able to see the payments as well okay, benson i think that's fine now for that okay okay thank you so let yeah, me i think that should be adequate for for the demonstration thanks all right Let me stop sharing. Yeah, thank you so much. That is an, an extremely interesting sharing. So George, uh, I think you wanted to share some of the recommendations. Yeah, okay. The...
So yeah, in terms of, of what we need to do is obviously continuous improvement of products. There, is, there, are, there are challenges around uh, pests and, um, and and you know the validity of the of the satellite data and all that. We need to continually increase the distribution channels because the problem is is big. The farmers are in very vast geographies. Then, uh, needs to get better and the providers in between and uh, used because that also helps them with insurance it has huge trust challenges Um, I think we lost George. I can't hear you anymore. Duck, I think I'm done. Okay, so you were on mute, sorry. Um, and I, you dropped out for a few seconds at least on my line. Well, thank you very much, George. And thank you very much, Benson, for sharing this. Um, and we'll talk about the recommendation and the lessons learned a little bit later. Before we continue, let me quickly uh, share the housekeeping slides, which I should have done earlier. So, um, you know, the presentation will be around 90 minutes. Um, we are recording this meeting. So later during the discussions, keep that in mind and we make that recording available and the presentations will also be made available. Um, if you have a question and I will encourage you to speak later, please use the Q&A function. If you have a technical problem, please use the chat function. So no questions in the chat function, only technical problems. And please add the questions in the Q&A function. And also later, you can raise your hand and we'll put you, we'll turn on your camera and you will be able to speak to everyone. And I have already some people in the audience uh, that I would like to get involved later. So um, back to the panel and uh, Elizabeth, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Doug. Uh, as you heard, my name is Elizabeth. I work for Digifarm. So I'll quickly take you through what Digifarm, a Kenyan limited company, uh, we do. It's a subsidiary of Safaricom Kenya Limited. So just allow me to put up my slide. So I'll quickly take us through um, what Digifarm, uh, what we do in Digifarm. Now in Digifarm, we try to address, uh, can you see my slide, Doug? Yes, but can you put it on full screen mode, please? Okay. Yes, I will. That's perfect, thank you. Okay. So at Digifarm, we, 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 while we are doing this, we have an estimated 14 million farmers in Kenya. Now, approximately 80% of these farmers are smallholders. So we leave out the big chunk of around, a small chunk of around 20% of these smallholder farmers, uh, the large-scale farmers. And only around 65% uh, of these farmers earn around 125 shillings a day. So if you convert that into dollars, it will be around $1 a day uh, on, the, on the minimum. Now, in Kenya, GDP directly contributes 25% of the GDP and 23% of this directly. And there's a very strong relationship between agriculture production and the growth of GDP. There's a big uh, value that we have because a big chunk of the land in the world is in Africa, arable land, which is in Africa. And it's also estimated that 1% growth of agriculture in Africa, of, of 
agriculture in Africa results to close to um, you know 0.8 percent reduction in uh, in um, poverty. So some of the challenges that we try to address in Digi Farm, there's one big gap which is around the knowledge gap. The farmers really don't know what to do and when to do it. So you find they keep doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Then we have a big other big glaring challenge which goes to the quality of affordable input. So in bringing it back to context, a farmer plants maize and they expect to get a bounty um, you know, outcome. But you know, when you look back, the quality of the input that they actually planted, if you were to look at the crop plantation, was you know uh, not quality input. So at the end of it, they don't even get the bumper harvest they were expecting to get. Then the big part, which pretty much addresses what you're talking about today, is access to credit and insurance. The smallholder farmer, when they go to the big banks, uh, you know, and other financial institutions, they are required to meet a specific criteria to be able to qualify for this credit. Now, most of them do not have some of these documents. Some of them will require a title deed, and some of them will require you know some history of having been doing. Uh, this agriculture. Some of them have leased land, so they don't really get access to credit easily. And by extension, the insurance aspect. Now, the other big bit that we try to, uh, the other challenge that we actually get into try to address is access to market. 68% of the produce goes to the middlemen. If I'll bring it closer home, Doug, um, when I look at uh, a packet of milk in Kenya, which go, a liter, which goes for around a dollar or thereabout, um, the farmer who actually produces this milk definitely gets around uh, 0 0.35, which is around 30 Kenya shillings of this milk. So the rest of the money, which is around 68 to 70 shillings, goes to the middleman in terms of packaging, the post harvest losses, and you know the logistics part. So when you have to look at the value, the value that goes to the person who actually does the production is around 30 to 32%. And the other big challenge that we try to address is 28% of the produce gets wasted, especially during the post harvest losses, the whole bit around the logistics, how do you do the storage, the cold storage gaps. So those are some of the challenges that we see. So what we come in to do as Digifarm, we come in as an integrated mobile platform, which enables smallholder farmers to access a variety of services with the aim of improving their production and profitability with the, and in a purpose-led uh, technology company, which is the big Safaricom. So how we do that, the smallholder farmer have access to a feature phone, and we also have uh, smallholder farmers who have access to uh, you know, the smartphone, and we offer solutions to them. And the other big bit uh, in terms of uh, why we do what we do today, the global population is estimated to be above uh, 6.8 people today. And it is projected to grow to around 9.1 billion by 2050. And Africa is the youngest and the fastest growing continent. Now, if you look at the projections, feeding the world of population of around 9.1 billion in 20, 2050 will require raising the overall production by close to 50-60%. Uh, That's a report by FAO. So Africa, when you look at it, it has all the ingredients. It has the land, suitable land. It has the perfect climate. We have water all through. I was looking at Kenya for the last two weeks. We've been having what we'd call a pandemic. Lots of water, lots of rain. We have very good and reliable labor. And we all now have penetration of technology at a very fast rate. So according to the World Bank, Africa farmers and agribusinesses could create a trillion dollar food market by the year 2030. And it's these facts that we build what we're actually working on today, where our vision becomes leverage on technology to enable the smallholder farmers become more wealthier, resulting in a sustained food security. So our main vision is basically to transform the farmer, making sure the farmer is able to make money in the farming experience. So our picture of success in Digifarm is to have a happy uh, farmer, increased food production, so uh, in terms of the quality and the quantity. We are also looking at value creation of our shareholders and partners. We, we bring in a, a portal that can be able to bring in very many partners, including the soil testing partners, the insurance partners, the content partners, credit partners, and we are able to tie all these ends to, together to be able to offer an end-to-end -end solution. 
to our customers. The other big uh, picture of success that you're looking at is a job creation, where along each body chain, along each milestone, we are able to make sure everyone who interacts with the food chain, both from you know crop and animal, are able to get some you know reasonable um, source of income. We also are looking at food security, where we should be able to feed ourselves and also be able to feed the world. And the big item that you're looking for is the economic growth as we achieve the sustainable goals, number one, which is uh, no poverty, and number two is zero hunger. So when you look at the DG Farm Insurance and how we have incorporated it together, we have inculcated it into our whole product proposition. So what we use today, we have an area yield insurance index. And how we do it, insurance is actually a mandatory item for our DG Farm farmers who are contracted farmers who we work with from an end-to-end -end perspective. All the way from the registration, we have the channels that we use, which is the USSD and the app. And then we also work with the farmer during the production. We offer both physical extension service through our Digifarm village advisor, whom would actually refer to as the DVA. And we also offer e-extension service, which is basically USSD-based, SMS-based. And we have newly introduced the WhatsApp for business, where the farmer can be able to send a picture of what he's seeing or a video clip of what he's seeing and is able to get a response. We also have a call center, a 944, where the farmers can call in free of charge. And at the back, we have ad, you know, um, you know, ag agronomists and vets who are able to respond to the farmers at, uh, appropriately. So up to today, we have over 65,000 farmers who've taken up insurance and more than 16,000 farmers have been compensated a value of around 45 million Kenya shillings. Uh, the other bit that we work with, we work with the government from a subsidy perspective, which makes insurance affordable for our smallholder farmers. Now, we also have demystified the, uh, the myth that insurance is meant only for small, large scale farmers. Why? We've been also been able to open it up and break it down to these specific farmers and they're able to gain value you uh, in terms of especially when uh, you know the the weather does not favor them, then you are able to compensate. Um, the other benefits that we have achieved so far is protection from the yield losses due to the natural calamities. So we are talking about too much fl the floods, we are talking about the drought, which is very common because most of the smallholder farmers that we have in Kenya depend on the weather for doing the agricultural farming. The other bits that we are doing to be able to support these farmers to progress are we you know introducing to them irrigation services where they can be able to plant all year round. The other benefit that we have is ability to teach farm to recover the credit advance to the smallholder farmers. And how we are able to do that is very simple. We have systems and tools and a loan management system where we are able to recover uh, these loans uh, remotely and from a digital perspective. The other benefit is guaranteed return on investment for Digifarm and the smallholder farmer. So today in Digifarm, we have over 1.5 million, uh, 1.4 going to 1.5 million farmers that are registered on the Digifarm platform. So if I'll just take you through a snapshot of what our journey is and thank, uh, thanks for to Ben who actually took us through from the Acre Africa, the visual. Uh, what the farmer has to do is just to dial star 944 from the Safaricom SIM card and they'll be able to enter their ID, which is basically for data validation. Once they are able to dial that, they get a profile, which now indicates they can be able to navigate easily. What is Digifarm? They are able to learn. And the learning is on all aspects in respect to the value proposition that they're doing, the value chain they're doing, and also on the loan, if it's a loan information they want, and also insurance. What is the insurance? So from an insurance perspective, we give them content both digitally and we also have the DVAs, the Digifarm Village uh, you know, activists on the ground who are able to handhold the farmers and give them information. They're also able to buy inputs on the phone and access the, you know, the access to market. In a simple, uh, you know, snapshot, this is how we have uh, the Digifarm app, which is for our, you know, smartphone users, where they're able to see and they're able to navigate pretty easily. They're also able to get reports. They're able to see their performance from the previous, uh, you know, um, you know, planting activity, expected input, uh, you know, when they have done the planting activity, the expected cost, they're able to have a snap view, um, you know, summary on what, what is happening. They're also able to have access to the remote extension, what I was talking about, where they're able to, from a first time perspective, be able to share information, and the information is also, you know, responded back to them in terms of what they're able to see. And uh, on the USSD, they're only able to dial the star 944, and you have a very dynamic 
in Dynamic GSSD with respect to what they're doing and where they are. So it also makes it very easy for the smallholder farmer to be able to access that information. And also from a marketplace, we have a portal where our buyers can be able to view and be able to purchase uh, item and even place orders on what they're able to see. So also another snapshot of the successes and achievements that we've had. This is the sunflower that we started off with. We are able to support the farmers from a soil testing capability, the potatoes, and also, um, you know, some of the happy farmers that we have and we have interacted with. And thank you. And with that, Doug, I come to the end of my session. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Um, Elizabeth, I do have one first question for you. Um, when I look at this platform, do you think that one of the success factors is you're not offering only insurance, but you're offering a full package? Yes, yes. So we offer an end-to-end -end bouquet of the services. So we offer the, you know, we are able to fast register the farmer. So we know where the farmers are. We are able to geotag where they are. We are also able to give them input, okay? And we're also able to support them to some extent from a credit perspective. We are also able to give them a value addition of the insurance capability. And we're also able to support them by linking them up to the buyers. Yes, we are able to offer an end-to-end -end capability to this farmer to make sure he's profitable. Yes. Yeah, thank you. And the second question would be, so yeah, there's a foreign income involved there, are the farmers involved. Yes. So can you maybe walk us through a little bit through who are the other partners? How do you get them all together? And even probably more important, how, how can you align the interest so that you work all in the same direction and not in different directions? So it's a very interesting journey. The kind of partners that we bring on board are the same partners who have the same vision like we do to be able to offer worthwhile living to our smallholder farmers. So right from the registration, we already have partners whom we work with to be able to support in terms of registering the farmers. And we have three partners that we work with. We have AIS, we have KLPA in Kenya, whom we are working with. When it comes to the input, we are able to work with different partners to be able to support us to you know, link them to the manufacturers and also be able to offer a digital solution to our farmers, okay? When you go to the credit, we work with the banks, we are working with uh, you know, several local banks that you're working with to be able to support us to give us credit, to be able to give back to the farmers. We also have the internal supply in terms of uh, the money that we, ha we have set aside to be able to support these farmers on. From an insurance perspective, we work with ACA and we also work with uh, PULA to be able to bring these parts together. And uh, with them, they also have the government subsidy that they have incorporated. And you have created one simple solution that means meets the, the requirement of the, you know, of our, of, of our farmers, that's Eka Africa. And also on the marketplace, we work with many buyers, the bid, we work with Bidco, we work with EABL, we work with UNGA, very many buyers, both large scale, which we call tier one buyers, and we have the Mamambogas who we also are supporting in terms of giving them, the, you know, the, the produce, and we also give to, you know, uh, institutions. So we are able to create that marketplace that links the farmer to the marketplace at a reasonable price and by as much as possible to get rid of the middlemen who basically escalate the price. Thank you, Doug. Okay. Um, George, can I ask you also a question uh, around your presentation and maybe you can turn back on your camera if you allow. Um, we were talking about partnerships as here with Elizabeth and um, I heard that you have a new shareholder and you want to expand so you certainly need to work with many uh, partners as well what from your perspective is the challenges in scaling and reaching out to different regions new clients new countries you're still on mute yeah partnerships is critical for us in being able to to reach the, the farmers in different regions but the the challenge you're going to face one is ensuring there's alignment in interest by all the partners that you're working with because there are a lot of activities that are going on and people are pursuing different agendas some of the goals are short term and yet these are long haul thing that, that 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 one needs to be engaging in so identifying the partners and ensuring alignment is the, the challenge that we need to be dealing with um obviously the other thing is the cost of expanding into these geographies you know um 
these farmers are going to be spread let's over uh, sub-Saharan Africa or over the commercial region, different geographies, terrains, and all that. And especially the initial setup cost will tend to be very high. And, and therefore, we, we need to look at different funding mechanisms to, to ensure that the services can be distributed to, you know, to all these regions. Thanks. Yeah. And I have a second question for you. Um, when I was looking through this uh, demo, how do you tell your clients what they get? How do you teach them? How do you teach them how to use your product? Uh, what education tools or trainings do you have? Yeah, so there are different mechanisms. Um, so one, uh, Benson described the village champions model, which are really field agents who are trained. They are, they are, they are sort of um, the champion farmers. So, you know, you put them together and do physical training. So even as you digitize, you cannot entirely overcome the need to have individuals, people, you know, um, on touch, in touch with each other. Um, but that's the first level. Then the second level is then using the, the digital tools, social media, WhatsApp, text messaging to, to send messages to these people. And then uh, simple video um, products have also been developed, which, which take the farmers through the, these processes. Um, in some instances, we have kind of pictorials, uh, you know, which, which are then distributed on paper and somebody can read. And so there, there are different, you know, tactics that you use for the training. Okay, thank you. So uh, I heard that you said, uh, yes, digital, but we still need some, some direct contact with the client. Uh, Elizabeth, would you agree on that? So yes, digital is fine, but we can't do everything virtual. Yes, yes. So what we've done, we start with the known to the unknown. So it's also a big task around behavior change to be able to move them from what they're used to in terms of physical, uh, you know, you know, interaction. And then we all do that. We have a couple of what I would call in Kenya barazas. Barazas are basically just the farmer groupings that we have sessions and we take them through. This is what it means when you get an SMS, and this is exactly what it means. When you say one centimeter or one meter, this is actually what it means. The other big bit that we've done to be able to support, uh, you know, the field activities, we also have the demos. So besides what we send them on the WhatsApp and what we send them on SMS, we also have demo farms in each of these specific areas where the farmers can easily have access to, where they can be able to see how to better improve on their production. Yeah. Great. So we spoke about alignment of interests and partners, um, yes. high touch with a slow touch. So digital, yes, but we still need some context. And that brings me to uh, the situation that we are all currently in, which is the pandemic. Um, could you both share may maybe very quickly, how did that impact you? And maybe you can find anything positive in all this negative developments that we're currently seeing. Maybe start with Elizabeth. So, as, so if I could go first, yes, the pandemic has caused quite, uh, you know, a disruption in terms of the operation. Most of them having been uh, in expectation of the physical. So for a moment, yes, we had a small delay in terms of our distribution of input because we had to limit also the physical interaction and of course all the, you know, all the unknown uncertainty around physical contact. So we had to to stop or minimize our input distribution. However, it gave light to more insights. And the insights that you're now working on, besides the credit, the farmers were still continuing to, to do their planting activity. So yes, we invested a lot more in our remote extension and you know, our SMS communication, our calls, and you know, just being able to be available for the farmer at the time of need so that you can be able to still support them as they do the activity. So yes, our interaction remotely and digitally became more intensified to support our farmers. And yes, we are still doing that. So what we are seeing now, we actually have a hybrid, both physical, which means we have the DVS on the ground supporting us on that, and also a lot more on the digital presence. We are able to send them reminders and we send them up to date on what they need to do on a daily basis. Yes. Thank you. George, maybe you can share some of the experience in the pandemic. Yeah, Doc, I, I think it's it's very similar experiences to, to what Elizabeth has described. And, and one of the outcomes is um quick adoption of, of, of digital tools. I think that that for me is what what, what stands out. Um you know, we now see virtual meetings happening with farmer groups and guys getting on their phones to, to attend meetings, which, which I think has been accelerated by the limitations that they that they 
the pandemic has brought. Yeah, but that is the lessons are very similar. That's okay. Great. So thank you both. It would be meeting in person. You would receive a nice round of applause. And so step the experience aside, and we keep that in mind, and we'll have the discussions hopefully with the audience later. And I would like to invite our third speaker today, Agnes Shakonta to present your journey and experience in digitalization of insurance. Please, Agnes, so the floor is yours. So you can see your slide. You can see my slides. And Thank we you. can hear you, but we can't right. see you yet. Oh, you can't see. Let me just. Oops. Now to my video. Wonderful. Okay. All right. You can see me now. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Thank you for giving me this opportunity to share uh, our experience as Madison Life Insurance Company as to what uh, our experience has been regards digital inclusion, inclusive insurance solutions. You will note that uh, as Madison Life Insurance, we've been in micro, um, we've been in micro insurance uh, for a long time. Uh, it's been a journey uh, over 20 years. To start with, uh, we started with the credit life um, policies. We moved on to the funeral insurance as we're developing more products through interaction with our various customers. However, with time, we noted that we needed to move on and uh, uh, develop another aspect of voluntary um, uh, uptake of micro insurance. And in this regard, we had um, a number of discussions with a number of partners, especially the MNOs, the telecoms. We, we tried to partner with them, but it proved uh, quite difficult. And hence we moved on uh, to find other digital um, insure tech suppliers and see how we, can, uh, how we could move and develop a product. And one of the products that we had um, developed was that of a funeral policy uh, called Tiritonse. And this product has been on the market uh, since 2014. However, its journey started with uh, an experience on the digital platform. And that's what we want to uh, focus on and share. Um, please help, is, is, is the screen okay? Are we able to see? Yeah, can you please put it on full screen mode, maybe, so that it's yeah, a bit bigger? Yeah, I thought that's why. Yeah, so that it's bigger. Yes, let me just look for that uh, gadget um, down there. On huh? no, I want it to be on full. It's screen. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So the product that we're talking about and sharing on is a Tiritonse product, and this is a funeral product. And it's basically a, a, a targeting uh, families up to eight members and uh, aged um, uh, between zero to 25 years. And obviously parents would still come in and um, extended family at an additional uh, cost. The benefits payable between five and a maximum of 100,000 with a cashback uh, every three years. And in terms of uh, claim processing, uh, paid, uh, claims are processed within uh, 48 hours. 
and it has an, a flexible uh, premium payment um, uh, arrangement where uh, clients um, are able to pay as they are comfortable. Yeah. In terms of um, the admin system uh, that we worked with, um, we worked with a system called, um, oh, sorry. Worked with a system called eTopUp. And uh, the system uh, was uh, gotten out of Zimbabwe. Uh, like I said before, after our experience with compulsory products and working with a number of partners, we moved on to um, source a platform that can help us distribute the product um, to any um, Zambian countrywide and something that was able to help us reach uh, as many people as possible and especially the informal sector, because that's where we noted that we had a challenge. And our discussions with the MNOs were not giving us any positive um, results. And hence we went out to look for a system. The likes of what has been presented uh, by our two colleagues and that which was presented yesterday. And we came up with a system uh, called Etopap out of Zimbabwe. And uh, this system was a digital platform that uh, was meant to help us um, uh, 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 distribute our product, which was Tiritonse. And uh, this product was a, in the form of a starter pack. So we developed a starter pack and um, we did a, a lot of uh, research on the market. We had um, working groups, we engaged the marketeers and other segments of the informal sector uh, such that they were happy with the product. And we moved on to develop a starter pack, which um, we produced and started uh, to distribute our product. And also the system was able to integrate with a number of um, uh, premium uh, collection uh, platforms. We had the likes of uh, uh, Consequence, Kazan, Airtel Money, Zamtel Kwacha, and MTN and various other platforms that we're able to integrate. So in terms of system, we thought uh, we had um, the best that was there and uh, we were happy uh, with what we had. And in terms of system cap cap capabilities, we could do registration, we could do policy administration and uh, premium accounting. Hence, we launched our product in 2014. And um, there was a lot of uh, uh, learning points there still as we started our journey. We've just shared um, some of the um, um, distribution arrangements and partners that we had. I think we worked with the mobile uh, kiosks. We see a lot of these in the, in the, in the towns and even um, up country. Basically, they are uh, spread uh, countrywide. We continued to work with the microfinance digital collection operators. We worked with the union, uh, labor unions. We continued to work with financial institutions like the MFIs, the circles, the credit unions, community-based organizations, cooperatives, farmer associations, market associations, religious groups. We did. Um, quite a lot of work in terms of engagement with possible aggregators and partners for us to distribute our product. What you see there is one of the meetings that we had um, uh, with uh, potential uh, aggregators and individuals. Um, so we also are showing another slide where we've seen, shown how we worked with the uh, uh, circles, addressing the farmers, worked with the um, construction workers, worked with the marketeers, worked with all the uh, different categories of the low income and um, uh, market. So in terms of our model, that was our model. Uh, we had MLife and we had direct agents and we also had partners as earlier uh, alluded to. The starter packs were sold to the clients uh, through these two mod models. And also we, we, 
we had the clients follow through the instructions on the starter packs to enroll. That's how the, the system was. It started with a physical uh, document, which an individual, uh, a possible client bought at a, a, a fee of uh, 30 kwacha then. We used to say one kwacha per day. If I can't afford 30 kwacha uh, upfront, I can still pay one kwacha every day. And by the end of the month, I would have paid my monthly premium. And um, we also had the upgrades on, on the system. That is to include your, 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 your dependents or to upgrade, uh, whatever you wanted to do, you could still do that on the system. And also because of the integration, you could pay your premiums uh, through the uh, various platforms as Elia shared. Um, what we noted with, our, with the partnership was that um, we had to pay uh, incentives to our partners and our various uh, and various and our various agents. The agents also came in different forms. There were those who were tied. There were those who were uh, licensed and uh, various um, categories. We noted that we needed to pay an administration fee, which was basically a, a commission based on the policies sold and the premium collected, and also we needed to to uh, provide immediate cash incentives to our agents so that the price of a starter pack was already made right at the beginning and commission was paid on all subsequent uh, 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 premiums. You will note that um, because of the variations of these partners already, this was one of the challenges uh, that we had uh, in terms of how to move forward. What were the positives? I think generally the product was accepted on the market, we were able to sell um, and the distribution was very, very good. And I must say that uh, the premium, uh, the initial premium was good in that uh, people were able to uh, um, uh, um, sign up and pay the premium. However, we had a challenge with the uh, renewal premium in that uh, we noted that not many people would still go to the um, uh, 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 kiosks and pay the premium. Now, what was the uh, experience? We noted that, that the uptake was very low um, compared to our projection. And this was because of uh, the cumbersomeness of the instructions for enrollment. We, we noted that um, the process was too long and hence it became cumbersome, especially when it came to adding dependents and other uh, relations. We also noted that the partners, partners concentrated on their core businesses and neglected the distribution of the product. With time, uh, the partners felt they were not getting value for the time they spent uh, on the product and hence they kind of neglected it and concentrated on their business. And also, as Elia mentioned, because of the variation as, uh, of the partnership, uh, incentives um, were working differently for the different partners and hence it put a challenge. However, one of the biggest uh, issue experience that we had is which we didn't foresee at the beginning was that the platform was uh, quite costly. I think the fees uh, with time became um, uh, expensive. Um, they were uh, driven by numbers. So the more we sold and um, brought in, the more expensive it became. And yes, we could not um, a, a, a meet um, uh, the cost of um, uh, using the system. And then the digital platform could not validate uh, the data and it in, in, a related a increased um, the number of uh, lapsation. And we also noted that we couldn't really interact with the customer as much as we have desired uh, because the system had a uh, um, limitation. Further, our interaction with clients revealed that they needed more uh, composite insurance uh, and nature bundled uh, products, which would cover death, theft, fire, and health. So when we went back to the system provider, we noted that um, that was not possible or doing it was uh, going to be uh, very, very costly. You note in yesterday's presentation, um, I think um, the first presenter mentioned that when they visit, when we, 
they visited M Life, where they uh, given them um, um, a projection that after the funeral, policy would move on to add the domestic travel to the platform and see how we could reach uh, out to members. However, when it came to engagement with the pro, uh, system provider, we realized that um, it would cost us more money and hence uh, making the product um, uh, not profitable. Added to that was the issue of um, lack of knowledge uh, and the uh, comfort of our prospects because the system was kind of new. I think the usage, as much as they were using a phone, the fact that they still had to uh, 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 tap into a new uh, digital platform uh, became a challenge and also the cultural aspect of the funeral. We also noted uh, that our system was uh, fragmented. The process was fragmented. We had uh, both manual and digital processes brought together. And that really did uh, pose uh, a challenge as to uh, how we moved on. I just want to show a picture of what it was. Uh, you, you saw that we had the enrollment premium collection and the claim processing online, but all these other aspects of the, um, uh, the products were being done uh, manually, which uh, proved a, a challenge. Um, so what are the um, uh, challenges? Most of them I mentioned as I was talking about our experience. We noted the challenge of partners concentrating on their core business, uh, mainly on account of um, not uh, them uh, not uh, seeing value, much value from the uh, business, from the arrangement that we had, because the numbers were uh, not as much as anticipated. And meanwhile, the digital platform uh, um, uh, partner was uh, maximizing on their uh, income. And then we saw the low enrollment uh, uh, process, as earlier mentioned, which was long, experienced a fragmented process, limitation in capabilities, expenses of operating and determining the right incentives for the partners uh, proved a challenge, as was mentioned. Um, what are the lessons? Uh, we need to simplify the product and take, uh, take a process. And if we say we're digital, have a fully integrated system that can be able to uh, take the product through and also to encourage, partnership, uh, encourage partnerships that support inclusive um, insurance. They should be able to um, see uh, the, that as an incentive and beyond their core business and make sure that we have other um, aspects that encourage uh, the partnership, such as customer loyalty, risk transfer, profitability, and also to train and incentivize the customer facing employees, especially of the partnership and support uh, digital solutions for the salespeople. What's the vision, the way forward? Uh, I wish to mention that digital is still a major component or catalyst to um, uh, the penetration of micro insurance. There's no um, other way. And we've noted that with COVID, uh, we're basically moving the digital way and we cannot run away from the distribution of um, uh, telecoms. This link, this partnership is important as much as they are also transforming and uh, uh, going in, into another phase, we still need them because they provide fantastic aggregator uh, um, uh, opportunities. They are trusted and they have high uh, penetration levels as well as straight and, uh, and integrate, integrated uh, processes. We also need to be looking at how we can distribute our products through social media, WhatsApp, and it provides a wide bucket in which we can tap in. And then also develop other digital solutions beyond the MNOs, like the e-top apps. How can we have this developed? I'm happy that we're able to listen to the other presenters who are um, uh, digital systems that can help us uh, move forward. And also the issue of uh, working with um, applications like the web-based uh, applications, which uh, a lot of people have a lot of comfort with. Um, I've run out of time, I'm seeing Drake, but I'm, I'm, I'm almost uh, done. I also want to say that we still can't run away from the aspect of the human element and coming up with customer-centric products 
and um, issues of claim processing and above all innovation. We still need a lot of um, innovation if we have to uh, um, uh, win this uh, battle of um, increasing micro insurance um, uh, penetration. And also the future of insurance in general lies in digital platforms. So we, uh, we, we have to continue uh, being innovative and this at all touch points as regards um, uh, insurance and micro insurance in particular. I thank you. Thank you so much, Agnes. And um, that was a very interesting presentation. Now to, well, I took some points already that I learned. So yes, we're talking about digitalization, but mm -hmm. we talked a lot about partnerships. Mm -hmm. And uh, so can I also ask maybe the two other speakers to turn back on the mics and the cameras so that we can start a discussion and also to the audience, you can already start to think about questions. So please put them in the Q&A. But before we take questions from the Q&A, I pulled, I know Shipango is in the audience here as well, so he can uh, intervene if I'm saying something wrong. But I took your slide, Shipango, here from yesterday, and I wanted to discuss that with the panelists. If we look here at the stakeholders, we were talking about partnerships, and here are the tax stakeholders. My, my first question would be, and I would have an answer, certainly, but I'm interested in your answer. Are we missing any stakeholders here if we look at that picture? Like, I was missing the distribution channels, for example. Elizabeth, do you have any views on that? If you, from your experience, if you look at the list of stakeholders, what other stakeholders should be maybe on board? And just from a snapshot, and I agree with you, <laughs> uh, so, you know, like um, additional distributors are missing that. And, um, and I think she also mentioned there is a need to have partnerships with the MNO. It's not appearing on the presentation, but she had mentioned that. Uh, you yeah. know, with the MNOs, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. George, any views from your side on additional yes, stakeholders uh, that are important? Yeah, yeah, that, uh, that, that the input companies, I think, are important because it just enables us to reach. Uh, the There's a problem with your better. microphone. Maybe it's, it's touching your. Is it? Is it better now? That is much better. Okay, yes, I'm saying the, the distribution uh, people, the input mm -hmm. companies um, are important partners to have. Yeah, okay, in case of agriculture. Yeah. Um, a second observation in your presentation um, was the following. I attended many sessions and conferences when where we're talking about, we were talking about digitalization, the problem of missing regulation, not so good regulation, not an, non-enabling regulation was a problem. What's your perspective on the role of the regulators to enable digitalization. Maybe George, you can start with that one. Uh, so I, I think the way I, I, I see it is, is we need to, to, to make the regulators part of this discussion from the beginning um, so that they can see exactly where we are going, what challenges are we facing? And they can also start considering what, what needs to be tweaked in the, in the regulations to make things work. So if they are part of the journey, I, I see that the outcomes will be, will be much better. You know? But I think when you design and then go back to them at the tail end, then that's where possibly conflict, conflicts will be increasing. OK. Elizabeth, your views on the regulator's role and your experience, maybe. I think so the Kenyan <laughs> regulator is not listening. <laughs> So pretty much, uh, you know, just like what George has mentioned, it's a deliberate activity, and that's what we've done, a deliberate activity to have the government engagement from the 
pages. And that goes a long way in trying to get their buying and also set the pace in terms of, you know, just offering the experiences that we've had as they build the regulation on how they can be able to support. One of the other things I've seen that we're doing within Digifarm, we actually work with the government in terms of uh, giving the e-subsidy, which is still an end-to-end -end capability and, you know, offering our, you know, our customers an end-to-end -end provision by involving the full government full swing in everything that we do. Uh, considering DACA, we are primarily a telco moving into a fully technology organization. So, we we work with the government completely in terms of you know just having them on our side and working together to make sure we have a proposition that still sticks within the policies and we are able to offer an end-to-end -end solution without you know stepping on anyone's toes. So yes, there's an engagement that is required with the government from the early stages and we work hand in hand with them to make sure they create an enabling environment for us to be able to operate in. Agnes, your views on the regulator's role? Yeah, uh, I just want to support what the two colleagues have said. We need the regulators, we need the government. Uh, in terms of um, missing um, uh, stakeholder, maybe we can also think of the media. Uh, in terms of communication, we also need them there. Uh, and uh, these also help disseminate the information. You know that one of the challenges that we have with insurance is the issue of appreciation, understanding, and education, which we can really uh, get it done through the media. And that's where also the regulators and the government comes in as well. Uh, we, we need these on our, uh, on our side as well, so that they can uh, be a, a means of disseminating the information. And also they provide the assurance and the confidence that the market needs. Once the government can support the micro insurance, inclusive insurance agenda and spread the word, uh, there will be a lot of buy-in and a lot of interest. In terms of regulation, we need regulation. The only way that you can manage um, uh, the growth and also uh, provide the consumer protection and uh, right products on the market is if there's regulation and the regulator comes in uh, to provide that service. I'm happy to report that in, in Zambia, we've seen a, a great improvement in this area and we've seen a development where the Insurance Act has been uh, revised and uh, I think it passed its third reading and soon it's low. And in there we are seeing where micro insurance is being uh, recognized and um, uh, it's being uh, uh, given the attention that is uh, due and also the issue of coming up with guidelines which will be enforceable enforceable and that will help uh, develop uh, the, 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 the inclusive insurance that we're targeting and that will also give it the attention that is so required. So you cannot over emphasize the importance of regulation and government involvement. Okay. There's a question uh, in the Q&A that also goes to you, Agnes, which is around, well, how, uh, let me just read it. Unfortunately, there is no name put to the question, so I don't know where it comes from. Um, so after the challenges that were faced with the partners concentrating on their core business, what solutions has medicine have been put forward so that you can get the maximum of the partnerships? Are you still working with m &M? So what did you do to get the maximum out of the partnerships? We've gone in and engaged them. Uh, the partners are interested in volumes uh, because with volumes, if it's premium uh, collection, then they'll be able to uh, bring in uh, amounts that will add um, to their revenues. So the whole issue has been, how do we uh, look at this whole process and uh, redesign it? And we went forth and uh, looked at it. Now you can sign up for the product online. If you are able to sign up for a product online, that's, or that means it removes a lot of anxieties and questions and cumbersomeness that was there. And once this product is online, then it, it, the process is uh, uh, straight uh, 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 through. And we, we've also done a lot of education so that the volumes have gone up and we're seeing increased uh, uptake with time. Obviously, a lot of engagement with other partners to push um, uh, the volumes and also the premium uh, um, uh, collectors. And also we've improved on the system. We're able to send reminders. We're able to prompt clients to go and pay. 
but the challenge is still that um, people still have to be pushed. I may remind, but uh, to go and pay is another issue. So we still have that gap as regards uh, premium payment, but we must say that it has improved. And we've partnered with the um, uh, uh, premium collectors also to do a lot of sensitization. Okay. Elizabeth, maybe you want to add to that. How do you did you make your partnerships successful? Uh, so what we've done from a partnership engagement perspective is just to have regular sessions. And maybe one thing I need to mention, which I had missed out, we have embodied the Agile methodology of product development, which basically means you're able to develop in bits and pieces to have the big picture. So one of the things that we have done to make sure even our partners are on board is to slowly introduce them to the Agile methodology and to listen to them, start from where they are and bring them on board with respect to how we do, we can be able to achieve the common goal and to have the big picture. The other thing that we have done is to respect our partners and you know trust what they give is actually for the good of the of the of the customers that we are delivering the service with and work with them get a lot of involvement with them and we also support them one of our also our mission is to make sure our partners grow as we grow they actually grow with us so that they can also be able to see the full value of what we are doing together today and just to mention uh, yesterday i had a session with um you know, the Agrovex yesterday, it's around 80 kilometers, a place called Machakos. And one of the things that was coming out predominantly, they had been paid the insurance, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, payment that was done on Saturday. And you could see the DG farm master agent, who are basically the Agrovex, had the passion of the farmers in terms of appreciation of the value that had checked into their phone. And it's a very clear message. We have been able to, uh, the insurance has paid you 5,602 shillings. It has repaid your loan and the balance that you have is so and so, and you can redeem that from the MPESA. So we also ensure the success stories we have, we work with our partners and you know, we dance with our farmers as well. So thanks, ha heavy involvement with our partners and appreciation has been the key. Thank you. Um, I need to look at the time a little bit, and I think we need to close this session soon, but I would like to ask for a last round uh, of your views, and I would like to start with George, and I can integrate a second question of the Q&A, uh, which is really important. So we are looking at 15, 20 years of journey and inclusive insurance, and yes, it's been an interesting journey, and there's a lot of positive developments. When Agnes and I met the first time, the iPhone wasn't existing. Yeah. We didn't have smartphones. No. Now it feels like smartphones have around forever and we can't live without them anymore. So there's new technology coming up that is really helpful. But at the same time, we must, ignore, we must admit, how many people are we still covering after 15, 20 years? We are by far not covering the people that we should cover. So from your perspective, what is still missing? And what would be one, two, three recommendations from your experience to be successful? I know it's a very challenging question and you can't really save the world in three sentences, but <laughs> try to be brief, try to be frank, try to be catchy. We were talking about media, so get something on the first pages of media. So George, start with you, please. <laughs> yeah, I, I think first of me, I, I must start with the apologies, Tansa, because I'm an insurance person all my life. So the fact that um, you know insurance is a, is a risk transfer mechanism. And, and, and the reality is that for a long time, there are other risk transfer tools that people are able to use in Africa, which are probably not available in other markets, is, is, a, fa is a factor that, that must always be, be considered. So that's the insurance guy talking. Um, but look, the setup costs of some of these things are very high. It's critical we find a way of bringing government and partners to be aligned in the entire activity. What we see are multiplicity of activities happening all over the place, and you'd wish there was one starting point so that we're all driving towards a common goal. I think that's that's the one key thing that you see happening. And the challenge with that is that then you get different outcomes for the same people. Some are good, some are not good, um, and, and therefore to keep driving we need to find a way of, of making this almost a single effort um, if it was possible. That, that, I think that would be my, 
my thought if you want to drive this quickly. But but the reality is that insurance does take a long time to mature. That that's that's one aspect that we cannot run away from. Thanks. I was in mute. Agnes, maybe. Okay, thank you, um, Dick. For me, I still would uh, say, in addition to what he has said, I would also focus more on the digital aspect. Uh, I think digital, as we've seen from um, the usage of WhatsApp and all the social media, they're basically making the world a small village. How do we use uh, this same digital to reach out to everyone and sell insurance? And um, with that, it means we need to uh, come up with digital means beyond the MNOs. Yes, they are there, but what else can we do that can help us bring in uh, the numbers that we need? And besides that, I'm also thinking the need of uh, product development, bring up products that will be able to speak to different individuals to meet their different needs. Um, that will also help us to ensure that inclusive uh, insurance uh, reaches everyone and not forgetting the customer engagement. Uh, whether we go digital, whatever means of distribution we come up, we still need to communicate and put a human face uh, to insurance so that the comfort, the trust, and the, uh, the meeting of need is, is met. So I think those are my points. Uh, take. Thank you, Agnes. And last but not least, Elizabeth. Okay, um, I think my colleagues have actually mentioned pretty much everything. The pandemic is very close to us and we have seen and we have experienced having a strong digital capability is actually the way to go. Uh, the, the, the unfortunate part, it came in earlier than we were expecting, but it has become the way of life. So for me, having products that are pretty much defined to be able to fit uh, the specific times and to be able to have a bigger reach are key. And I think the other big bit is just to listen more to the customer and work towards what the customer insights guide you to is actually one of the you know the big feats to make this actually work and also putting your your ear on the ground to be able to find out other areas in which you can be able to address the customer solutions i think that's a big way to go and yes the digital inclusion is unescapable. We are already here, so we also have a task to be able to make sure, uh, coming now from a, a technology company, we have a robust network that can be able to support both SMS, USSD, you know, the smartphone applications, and also the web is also a key item that we need to focus our energies on if we are to get the expected outcome by, you know, being able to also feed and support our, you know, partners to be able to achieve their objectives. Yes, thank you. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you, Agnes. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, George, for joining this session. Uh, thank you to the audience for listening. Um, I think we close this session now here. We stop the recording, but uh, I asked the Microtrans Network, maybe we can keep the session still open for a few minutes so that we can 